Hello and welcome back to the New Well Rum Club. This is Rum 360 and today we're looking at a bottle called Hampton Estate aged eight years. This is batch two. So that's quite important and I'll explain that in a little bit. But firstly, I've been, uh, I've been away, I've been super busy at work um, and life, and to be honest, I haven't been able to create a lot of videos. But what I have done in that period is, I have bought myself a new camera, so I'm not using my phone. I bought myself a mic, so hopefully the speech quality is a bit better. Let me know if you notice a difference, but that means that I want to be making a lot more videos on rums like this for you guys. So why have I picked this bottle? I think the main one really is, anything coming out of Hamptons is worth uh, an investigation. Um, Hamptons is considered the grand crew of Jamaican rum, so naturally I wanted to explore it. I think the other one is, it's a really good intro into Jamaican funky rum. It's not up there in terms of the ester levels, but it's got enough to really give you uh, a sense of what funk is and has a lot of personality. I think finally, you know, with the price point, with the quality, for me, I feel like this should be considered for everyone's rum shelf. You know, so from that perspective, it's an all-rounder. It's probably one of my favorites of the year. And I thought I'd bring it to the channel to give you my thoughts on it. So Hamptons, um, a distillery from 17, 1753 in the Trelawney district in Jamaica. Um, their processes are quite unique. They have dunder pits, they have muck pits, they have open fermentation. Their whole process, if you look at it, makes you consider should you be drinking this stuff. But forget all of that or have a look at it through the Cocktail Wonks or the Lone Caners uh, uh, blogs because what you really want is the taste of the rum that comes out of it and it's very, very good. Um, and in the range, so, you know, they've been open for that long but really they've only been releasing their own bottles since 2018. And since then, a lot of it has been from Vellier. So to give you an idea, you've got, you know, the Habitash and Vellier series, which is looking at aged and unaged rums, um, all pot still, unadulterated, um, and, you know, premiers. So in this case, it's looking at the La Roque mark and something that, uh, that they've been doing through all the different marks that Hampton have to offer. You've got things like this um, La Roque 2010, now, when it first came out at around the 130, 140 euros, pounds mark, it looked too expensive. Forget all of that, try it. Again, one of the best runs I've tried this year. Um, there is a single cast series, um, or actually this one's not quite single cast. This is a single cast from Habitat and Vellier. Um, you've got the Trelawney Endemic Bird series. Again, very limited. Some of them down to 82 bottles because I think they spilt one of the barrels but super exclusive, really difficult to get your hands on, but great expressions of Hampton. You've got the Hampton Great House, which they started in 2019. It's a blend of a couple of the marks, um, released in 2020 again. This is 2020 and there's 2021 expected in time soon. Um, but really we're talking about this one, which is um, one of the cheaper, younger bottles on the range. But to give you an idea, 130, uh, about 100, 200, 100, a couple of hundred. So 50 pounds, 55 pounds for one of these rums. You know, with that sort of pedigree coming out, it really is producing some premier rums. And that's why the Hampton eight year old is something that you should consider. So let's have a look at the bottle in question. There is loads of details on the bottle, so do find your way through underneath a couple of crocodiles and it will tell you everything from um, the, the high art of esters, how it's matured fully in the tropics, um, the endemic rum um, from Trelawney, uh, the fact that they only do pot still. Um, what else have we got? They use natural spring water. They tried it with local, um, with bottled other water. The taste wasn't the same. They went back to spring water. Nothing is added. So really, the bottle tells you everything you need to know. Um, what it doesn't tell you is what marks of rum are in there. So batch one looks exactly the same as batch two. Very subtle differences. Batch one was actually seven years old instead of eight years old. Um, and it comprised of a number of the marks, including Dock, which is the highest ester range. So, you know, if you find it, the only way you're gonna tell the difference, it doesn't say eight year old on there. Pretty much everything else looks very, very similar. Um, 
Whereas when you've got the eight-year-old from batch two, um, it's a single mark OWH. And if you have a look in the ester range, um, it is the lightest mark, which means it's not the funkiest, but it's still funky. Um, the only other details to talk about are really, it's 46% ABV um, uh, and it's ex-bourbon. So I think that gives you all the details you need to know. So on the nose, really, you, you smell that it's a Jamaican rum. There's no questions there. You get those esters, you get those overripe uh, bananas, you get some pineapple, some, some red fruit. I'm getting a bit of chocolate. Now, if, you, if you're not used to Jamaican rum uh, or, or high ester Jamaican rum, it's just gonna smell a bit strange. It's not gonna smell like your usual rum. Um, this was my first experience um, when I first started uh, smelling Jamaican rums and I thought, do I like it, do I not? But it is something, there was something there that kept on bringing me back and bringing me back. Now, you know, I'm kind of addicted to the stuff. I really like it as a go-to rum um, and that smell is quite unique and it really is a lovely one on this bottle. So, mm. When we get to the taste, you know, you still get those bananas, you get some apples, you know, there's vanilla, cumin, spice, lots and lots of things coming in. Again, it tastes like a Jamaican rum. There's, there's no getting away from that. And that is something that isn't gonna suit everyone's palate. But for me, this is a really pleasant sipping rum uh, and one that I naturally go to quite a lot. Um, the the mouthfeel on it, you know, it's not a huge mouthfeel. It, it is about, you know, it's a medium mouthfeel there. You get some slightly different aftertaste, some varnish, some pepper, some butterscotch, maybe a bit of coffee, but all in all, you know, it is something that, that stays in the mouth and makes you wanting to go back for more. So when I did rate this um, on Rumex, uh, I gave it a solid 82, 82 out of 100. Um, I don't give points for presentation. Um, uh, it really was about the liquid. And, you know, I would say take the 82 aside and go to how, you know, what I consider this rum to be, which for me is one of the best priced Jamaican rums on the market at 50 to 55 pounds. I've got all of these sat in my cupboards, a lot of them open. I've got a lot of other bottles and one of my key go-tos is this rum. Now, if you do find this a little bit funky and some will, especially if you're coming from the whiskey world, you know, Rafi from Whiskey said, oh, this is a super funky rum. And I can understand why he says that. For me, yes, there's some funk, it's not super funky, but you may find it's a bit much. So the next one down for me would be from Worthy Park. Again, it's a pot still rum. Um, it doesn't, it has a very different process to Hampton. Um, and this is a single estate reserve, you know, still available today around 45, 50 pounds, but that would be something that slightly less funky, same price range, great sipper. And if you wanted to go Jamaican, but one more step down, you might want to go for an Appleton's 12, which is probably, I think you can get it for around 40 pounds. Um, but, I don't have one here today because I quite like the flavours of these. So it's worth considering when you're looking at the Jamaican rums, which one to go for. And for me, this is the entry level into proper Jamaican funky rum. This really does have a Jamaican taste. It does have some funk, but it is not like a Hamptons. And, and you know, one of the, the world favourites is Appleton's. You can't get away from that, um, but it's going to taste very different to these two. So these are two of my go-to rums. We're not talking about Worthy Park today, so I'll take that away. Um, you know, as I said, solid score on Rumex. If you like this one and you want a slightly stronger ABV, they do have the overproof. I think it's very similar liquid, but up at 60%. And if I was to score that, because it hasn't been um, reduced down, you're probably talking 84, 85 points. But again, for people who don't like the overproof, um, it's gonna taste it's probably not going to be to your liking. For me, this is one I like, 46%. Um, so on that note, um, this is the Hampton Estate, single, pure Jamaican rum, aged eight years. 
Hope you liked it. Thank you for watching Run360. See you soon.